The Spotlight, shining a light on podcasts and videos that have caught our attention. Hi, and welcome to The Spotlight. My name is Jen Spiker, and I look forward to highlighting a video you'll find in the Vision app. Gary Hoogfleet is six foot six inches tall, hence the name of his interview program, A Very Tall Man. Gary's interviews can be seen in the Watch tab of the Vision app. He's spoken to many Christians around the world, including a recent conversation in the UK with Anne Hegarty, who's possibly best known as the governess from the TV game show, The Chase. As we hear more of this conversation, Gary asks Anne how a professional quizzer prepares for her job. The Spotlight with Jen Spiker. How do you prepare then? Because if you're a sportsman, you go out and train, right? Yeah. Please don't tell me you open Google and, and switch on Wikipedia and just look. Uh, I don't exactly just switch on Wikipedia and look. The, the only time I would do that would be if I needed to just sort of feel like I was. I needed to wind down because that's actually my <laughs> way to relax. If I'm just sort of thinking, okay, I'm feeling irritated, you know, I'm upset by what's going on in the world, uh, I need to, you know, either go on Twitter and look at pictures of puppies or else I'll boot up Wikipedia and I'll just read about something nice and I'll just sort of, I'll pick somewhere, um, you know, I'll I'll pick a town and read about it and see if there's a nice stately home there and read about the stately home and look at pictures of it. My mother always, uh, my mother was a frustrated history teacher, I always think. Um, and uh, she used to take us to places. She was always taking us to castles and cathedrals and stately homes, and that bored me because I don't really learn by actually going to places and looking at them, but I love reading about them. You know, I would kind of stumble around these places thinking, I do not know, I do not care about any of this. And then she'd buy a guidebook, and, you know, I'd still be reading the guidebook in a couple of years. It would fascinate me, but I didn't want to actually have to go to the places. When you grew up, you, you weren't a Sunday school girl? No, not at all. I mean, actually, um, we occasionally went to our local Church of England school and occasionally I think we basically used to park um, my little brother in the Sunday school (laughs) um, just to shut him up, really. C.S. Lewis is uh, an author that I have a a lot of admiration for. Mm. Is he someone who you've read? Oh, absolutely. I've read so much. I mean, I was raised on the Narnia books and then I started coming across his Christian books. You know, I read things like um, Mere Christianity, I read, which really knocked me back, and then Miracles, uh, The Problem of Pain, uh, and a whole load of little essays of his, like The Weight of Glory and so on. Uh, and that made, that made a huge difference to me because I just sat there thinking, I can't actually poke any holes in these arguments. And I'm, I'm used to arguing, and I was brought up atheist, and... Um, this is all leading to, you know, very awkward and uncomfortable conclusions because I sort of can't help thinking he's basically right about all of this. So, um, so you came to, to, to faith, to Christianity, because you couldn't fault the argument? Basically, yes. I, I do still have a very sort of technical, logical, apologetic take on things. It's very unemotional for me. It's just sort of, well, okay, you know, this... This seems, in fact, to be the case. This is, you know, this is the truth. So that's how I came to that. So we're not likely to see you at a, at a Pentecostal church meeting with not your hands in the awfully, air? Not awfully, no, not terribly. <laughs> but you, you do have a strong faith and you, you still want to go to church on a regular basis? I do. I, do, I, I go to church on, on a Sunday. Um, found myself at church. When I was uh, last filming in Australia, um, found myself at church. I always went, you know, if ever I'm going to be somewhere else on a Sunday, it's like, right, where am I going to go to church? Yep. So, yeah, that's, that's got to happen. And in, in terms of, of a, a relationship with God, do, do you pray? I do. Um, I try and be thankful for things because uh, I just always think that I'm not sufficiently. And my life has been so fantastic for the last sort of 14 years. And I, I sometimes feel like, you know, I don't emphasize that perhaps enough in my own life. You, uh, you, you say that, you say, I'm autistic and there's a smile on your face. Um, it, <laughs> Yeah, um, it's it's more, I like a lot of alone time. Um, and if ever I'm socialising, it's because it's someone else's idea. So um, I'm never really quite sure how to, how to establish whether or not I have any kind of personal relationship with anyone. So, so how, do you, how do you define autism? Um, it's, um, it always used to be the case that um, there was Asperger's syndrome. And there was high functioning autism uh, and then there was autism. uh, And 
Asperger's syndrome was when you learned to talk in the normal time. The high functioning autism was if you had a, a speech delay. Um, and it was a spectrum. We've known since the 1990s that it was on a spectrum. Nowadays, they um, just bundle it all into autism. Uh, I would say it's, it's a way of your brain wiring up differently so that there are cues from humans that you don't always pick up. And if you pick them up, you're not always sure what they mean. Um, you have difficulty remembering faces, no matter how much you look at them and try and memorize them. Uh, you're never quite sure. It's as if you're not quite sure what you're looking for. Um, and it's about liking to be alone, liking everything to be predictable, having trouble improvising if you suddenly have to do something differently. Um, I always, you know, I have a plan B and a plan C and a plan D because if something goes wrong, I need to know I have all those backup plans. So I checked, you know, to make sure that I had this house in the sat nav. Uh, and then I actually looked at it on the sat nav and thought, well, I haven't actually got a technically, I haven't got an address here. So I went and looked at it on street view and thought, still not quite sure which of these turnings it is. So I had to ask, what is the name of the house? And once I had the name of the house, ah, I saw the sign. But I always think I've got to, you know, plan all those things, have all that that information as backup because I can't I can't think fast. Um, and it's the case in quizzing that I can't think fast. When you watch me in a final chase, you may think that I look really fast compared to most humans. I answer quiz questions really fast compared to most quizzers. I answer quiz questions really fast compared to most chasers. I'm the sixth out of six. I'm really not that quick. Well, because that would be the one thing that I thought that you were really good at, the instant recall. Of the but answer. It's because I know a lot. So, you know, there's a lot of it just floating below the surface. But Mark, for example, can answer questions far question, far faster than I can, and Paul can as well. When we do beat the chasers, um, I mean, when it goes out, you're on Twitter and so many people are going, is Anne's buzzer broken? Is Anne actually here at all? I'm like, yes, I am here. Every now and then I flinch trying to get to the buzzer. And sometimes I don't even get as far as flinching because Mark or Paul is in there ahead of me. Can I just go back to the autism thing for a minute? Because sure. I would imagine there are people listening that have for years thought there's something not right with me or it just doesn't feel good or they're looking at thinking of their children. The thing is, it is a syndrome, which means it's a load of symptoms that appear to be unconnected. And when I started investigating it, I, I looked at the list of diagnostic criteria and I thought, well, this is just weird because these are all things that look unconnected, but apparently they're all symptoms of autism, and nearly all of them are things that I either do or did when I was a kid, and nobody could explain them. Most other people didn't do them. So I looked at things like um, I used to lie in bed, and I would roll back and forth really quite fast um, for about sort of 30 seconds. Uh, and I now realize that actually is the sort of thing that, um, that autistic kids do. Uh, autistic kids are thought of as rocking. I rolled. Uh, you know, it can be either. It can be anything. It can be lots of things like that. They call it stimming. Um, and I was like, okay, nobody was ever able to explain this. And, and all I understood was that it made my hair go matted and my mother had terrible difficulty um, combing it out. I've got sort of frizzy Scottish hair um, and it's difficult to comb. And even worse, when you've been rolling back and forth on the pillow. Celebrity is quite a public thing and one of the questions that sometimes comes up is it's a two-edged sword mm. being as famous as you are mm. are you okay paying the price of that um yeah if i'm if i'm going somewhere and i'm late and i'm very often late um because i always take longer to do things than i think i'm going to and i take longer to actually kind of line all my brain cells up and point them at the problem and um say, right, you really need to get up and go and have a shower and get dressed and get in the car and get out. Um, and uh, because of that, if, I, if I'm late, as I so often am, you know, if I have to sort of go through a, a petrol station or something like that, quite often I'm staring at the floor a lot and I'm trying to send out this vibe of, please don't talk to me, please don't talk to me, because, you know, I am really extremely wound up at the moment and, and it will not be good for you. Um, but otherwise, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I, but sometimes I, I can snap at people. I try not to, and I feel terribly guilty if I do. Um, but, you know, I try as much as possible if, if, uh, if I'm out, um, if I'm shopping and people recognize me in the supermarket, 
you know, I try and smile and, and, and be friendly and pose for a selfie. Um, because the thing is, I'm always conscious of the fact that we, the, the show started in 2009. I joined in 2010. We didn't start to get serious media attention until about 2015. But between 2010 and 2015, who always recognized us was the public. The press didn't know who we were. The, 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 um, the paps didn't know who we were, but the public did. They were the ones who would stop us, and they were the ones who you knew was watching because we always got really high ratings. So you'd go to an ITV party, and everyone was sort of smiling politely at you, thinking, who is that? Um, and Mark would nudge me and say, we'd get bigger ratings than any of these people. Um, so I've always been aware, you know, these are really the people that, 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 that matter. Final question. When it's all done... Mm. How is Anne Hegarty going to live the, the 70s, 80s and 90s? Um, doing sort of pretty much what I do when I'm not out working. I mean, I just kind of stay home, surf the internet, read enormously, um, chat to people online, um, look after my house. I'm very undomesticated, really, but I sort of try and, you know, I always feel this sense of I've actually accomplished, you know, I've mended something, I've sewn on a button, I've actually got something ironed, I've put away the washing. Uh, this morning I actually cleared out all, all, the, all the clean dishes from the dishwasher. I'm so proud. You know, this stuff is hard for me. So I'll keep trying to do that sort of thing, basically. And will there be a cat in your life? No, I don't really want pets. I mean, I, I'm always very happy to engage with other people's pets, but I don't like anything in my house that might in any way kind of respond to me. I don't even, you know, I, I don't have an Alexa or anything like that because I want to be able to just talk to myself around the house without anyone sort of actually hearing anything I'm saying. So, um, no, nah, I always say nothing but the central nervous system. I've got pot plants. On the spotlight, we've been listening to part of a conversation between Gary Hoogfleet and Anne Hegarty. This interview is one of the new UK edition episodes of A Very Tall Man, found in the Watch tab of the Vision app. To watch this full conversation and more like it, scroll to the A Very Tall Man channel. If you have a favourite podcast or video series that you'd like to hear featured on the spotlight, click contact us at vision.org.au and share the link. My name is Jen Spiker. Join me next time as I share another podcast or video that deserves highlighting. For more great podcasts and videos like the one featured today, check out vision.org.au or the free Vision app.